God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Hello there, and we want to welcome you again to Upland's Spiritual Nugget on Friday. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That tells God that it is my understanding that he is the creator of all things. And I choose to rejoice in him choosing to bless me with this day. We hope that this time that you will spend with us will allow you to rejoice and be glad that you've made it to Friday because of God's grace and his goodness. We want to continue in our study um, through the book of Psalms. Um, and again, from time to time, we will deviate and uh, enter uh, maybe one of the other books as we have with Isaiah. But our primary focus is, again, to draw strength and encouragement, wisdom, insight from the book of Psalms. What a powerful and wonderful inspired writing that God gave those men who, again, created these Psalms, not just for them, not just for their time but for all time and for all men. We're going to be looking at Psalms 27. Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, A song of David, Lord, you are my light and my Savior. So why should I be afraid of anyone? The Lord is where my life is safe. So I will be afraid of no one. Evil people might attack me. They might try to destroy my body. Yes, my enemies might attack me and try to destroy me, but they will stumble and fall. Even if an army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. Even if people attack me in war, I will trust in the Lord. I only ask one thing from the Lord. This is what I want most. Let me live in the Lord's house all my life, enjoying the Lord's beauty and spending time in his palace. Amen. Amen. Let's dive a little bit deeper in the inspirational writing from David himself. Whom shall I be afraid? Now, let's look a little bit deeper in Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4. The story behind Psalm 27 is that David finds himself in a place that no father wants to ever be, where his son is among other men wanting to kill you. David finds himself where Absalom, his son, has him running in fear with a group of other men who want to kill him. They're engaged in a war with each other as to who was going to rule over Israel. Well, news had come back to David about Absalom, that he died in battle, which ensured a victory for David. And so he is happy on one hand to still be the king but he was heartbroken because his son had been killed and so he writes the Lord is my light 
And the Lord is called light because light drives darkness away. Light brings order and stability. As we recall, it was the first thing God did in the act of creation. Genesis 1 verse 3. Now understand, fear is a human instinct. Fear is a God-given instinct to help us survive against real dangers. Fear can cause people not to move when they need to. Fear and control can destroy. There are two kinds of fears, and they are quite different. Though it may be often hard to distinguish between them because they can get all wrapped up in each other. First, there are the real fears. As when David had enemies who had encamped around him. For us, when there is a killer in our neighborhood, or when someone wants to try to blow up an airplane, those are real fears but there is also a kind of fear that's not real there is that acronym for the word fear meaning false evidence appearing real it can hold a kind of power over us and it is not attached to a specific threat this is the kind of generalized fear that is not good for us It makes us less than who God wants us to be. It can rob us of dignity and courage and make us act in ways that we don't even like ourselves. Now, we live in difficult times. There is much fear and concern, not only about the future. There is fear of the here and now companies that are closing their doors and moving. Our children are no longer safe from harm in their own neighborhoods or schools. How do we handle the crazy times that we're living in? I want us to realize and to consider that difficult times are here, feeling men's heart with fear. Life is hard now, but it has never been easy for most people. And we do need to be reminded that God is eternal and the principles of his word are also eternal. They do not change, even in a changing society. So in the 27th Psalm, David presents several principles, principles that enabled him to handle difficult times in his life. And we can also apply those principles to help us deal with whatever may come our way as well. To begin the principle of relationship with God, this is fundamental. We must have an anchor that holds us firmly in place in the midst of the storms that we will have in life. James reminds us that we don't know what tomorrow may bring. In a lot of cases, we don't even know how the rest of this day will end. Now, I'm not saying that to cause us to be afraid or to worry about the uncertainty of life. But we need to be reminded of having a real personal relationship with God that we can draw on. That who is the answer to the question, what if? God is the assurance of salvation. David knew it. He trusted God. We must do the same. Our relationship with God must be our reality. Because you see, either we have a real relationship or we don't. 
And one of the reasons people are trouble having difficulty handling the difficulties of life is that they lack the assurance of a real relationship with God. If you are unsure, it's not difficult to get that sense of certainty. God is near. Spend some time in praying. He will answer your prayer. Knowing that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Knowing that he is the creator. All things are done by his will, his power. Trust in that. The Lord is our light. The Lord is our salvation. Whom or what shall I fear? Nothing. Amen. Amen. to think and pray about Psalms 27 verses 1 through 4 Dear Heavenly Father you are my strength my light and my life my all in all I pray that when dark clouds of fear set up crossing my heart that I will remember the wonderful truth of who you really are and the wonderful security and eternal salvation I have in Christ. Father, what a wonderful, faithful God you are to all who trust in your name. Thank you for the example of David. And I pray that I may become a man after God's own heart, who keeps my trust in you. Despite the difficult circumstances that I may be facing. I know that in your goodness you will provide for me and protect me as you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.